Kevin Carroll. I'm the Batoka District Supervisor and Vice Chair of the Chester County Board of Supervisors. Uh, I want to take a moment today to talk to you about our first responders. I'm talking about our firefighter paramedics, our law enforcement professionals, including police officers and sheriff's deputies. As a retired Chester County police officer of 32 years, I'm concerned for the well-being, quite frankly, of our first responders. As of today, the Grand Lodge of the Paternal Order of Police is reporting 54 officers have died from COVID-19 across the country. Um, like the medical professionals caring for those who have fallen ill, our first responders are also fighting on the front lines of this pandemic. Due to the nature of their work, and even during the best times, uh, these professionals take considerable risk each and every day. That risk is only heightened by this invisible enemy we now face in the form of COVID-19. It's also a risk that first responders' families are also taking. Each time one of our professionals goes home following a shift, um, they could be carrying that virus on them. So we want to help our public safety professionals stay as safe as possible. Fortunately, there are things we can do to help them, to lessen the chance of them contracting COVID-19 and to help keep them from to provide that outstanding service that they do each and every day. While our actions can help them, they also provide a level of protection for us too. While our focus may be on the COVID-19, many of the other types of emergencies that happen every day, they have not stopped. So our first responders must still be ready to handle all types of emergencies, um, car accidents, fires, those type of calls. So let's discuss what can we do to help them to keep them safe as possible. If you have an emergency, call 911. Try your best to stay calm and listen to the emergency communications professional on the other end. Uh, in addition to gathering information about your specific emergency, they're also going to ask you some brief questions related to COVID-19. Those questions may include, have you or a member of your household been in contact with someone who has tested positive for COVID-19? or is awaiting test results. Have you traveled in the past 21 days? That's an important factor to determine whether or not you may have gone to a state that has had a bigger outbreak of COVID-19 and been exposed. Have you or anyone in your household experienced any COVID-19 symptoms, including coughing, shortness of breath, or fever? These questions are designed to provide critical information to our first responders uh, before they arrive on scene. When they arrive, uh, they're going to be wearing personal protective equipment. You've probably seen that, uh, the mask, for example, they talked about it on TV, I couldn't even tell you how many times. They may give you a face mask to wear as well. Uh, this is to protect you and them. They may also ask you to stand behind a storm door or a similar barrier. Again, trying to social distance uh, to, to lessen the spread of COVID-19. If available as they talk to you, that's what they're trying to do. Um, and I know this is outside of what our norm is in society. We're not used to this. And so it, it may uh, scare you a little bit, but it's about protecting you and them. Uh, they will likely ask similar questions to, that the 911 caller asked uh, as they further evaluate and investigate the situation or as they begin to provide uh, care. If you're not the one uh, in need of care, the first responders will likely ask that you or any others that are in the area, please step back and give them room to work. Uh, which will also reduce, again, the possibility of transmitting COVID-19. There are some limited expectations or exceptions, I should say, uh, to who will be allowed to ride in an ambulance. Um, so right now, it's not allowed except for a few ex exceptions. For example, an end-of-life situation where potentially the person who's being transported could pass away, then they're probably going to let you ride in an ambulance. Um, perhaps a childbirth or when a minor child is in need of care. In those cases, they probably let you ride in an ambulance. But even if you get the in an ambulance, when you get to the hospital, the hospitals are not allowing loved ones in to be with uh, the patient. Again, these are precautions at medical facilities to prevent the spread of COVID-19. So for these reasons, it's important that you make and keep a list of underlying medical conditions you or a loved one has and include any medications being taken. Um, keep this list handy. Because a family member, again, will not be allowed in the ER to sit with you and answer questions. And if you are not able to answer the questions, this list will help the medical professionals administer care. You may also want to consider preparing a small overnight bag uh, containing 
any essentials you or a loved one may need. Again, it's a great place to keep the list so that if you get transported, they'll have everything they need. Many of the people infected with COVID-19 may only um, display or being affected by mild symptoms still. Uh, with everything that's been uh, put out on this, experiencing any symptoms uh, right now can be very scary. So if you're experiencing mild symptoms, it's important that you stay home, call your primary care physician and ask for advice. Anyone experiencing severe symptoms or who has a family member that's experiencing severe symptoms, such as trouble breathing, well, you should seek uh, emergency medical attention, dial 911. Realize your interactions with our first responders and public safety professionals may happen outside of the house. It's important that during these interactions that a safe distance be kept to the extent as possible. And should you need to stop by one of our fire or EMS stations or police stations, uh, please pay close attention to the signs posted in the entryways. These signs instruct visitors to step back 10 feet after ringing the doorbell. This measure, again, is for your safety and that of the first responders. If someone does not answer and you need immediate attention, again, dial 911. Chester residents are doing an outstanding job of staying home and keeping a safe distance from others when most go out or go to work. Um, I know that we have to go out and, and, uh, and go to the grocery store and provide for our families, but I've been out there and I think people are doing a fantastic job social distancing. As a retired member, of the police department still volunteers, I can tell you first on how much, firsthand how much our men and women uh, in uniform appreciate your efforts to practice social distancing and heed medical professionals' advice to stay home, wear face masks, we're on public. You know, even when our first responders are not on calls for service, they're wearing face masks for their protection and yours. Uh, thank you for keeping a safe distance. I'm so proud of the job that our first responders and the people of our community are doing together to fight the spread of this illness. This is a fight we're going to win. Um, we will come out of this. On behalf of the entire Board of Supervisors, I want to thank you for everything you're doing. I hope that you all stay safe. And God bless you and God bless the United States of America.